You don't really want me to talk, right? You just want them to keep playing? Just a few minutes. This past Friday evening, I went to a jazz club in New York. It was the first time I had ever been to a real jazz club, and I was not just going there for sermon research, though it was helpful. There was a four-piece band on that night featuring a trumpet player in a bright orange suit coat. In between songs, he offered his thoughts on trust, unity in diversity, and the current state of our country. I kind of wished I could just bring him here and let him do my work for me this morning. The band had been together for 13 years and the trust and understanding between them was evident in everything they played together. The orange-coated trumpeter was clearly the band leader but was not always the leader of the band. At least once or twice in every piece they'd played, he'd walk off stage entirely, letting the rest of the band shine. They played one piece called Don't Fall Off the Edge, which vacillated rapidly between rhythms and tempos, and which I think any conductor would have struggled to orchestrate. But this little group passed the ball of leadership around, pulling off radical changes and abrupt pauses like a seemingly well-oiled machine. Watching this band, I was reminded of the quote I had chosen just a couple days prior for the cover of the Order of Service today. On a blog called Jesus, Jazz, and Buddhism, Jay McDaniel writes, the idea of jazz is like the idea of justice or democracy. It is the image of people coming together, listening to one another, respecting one another's talents, and trying to create something beautiful together. He goes on to say, they are free to express themselves as individuals, having been, having been given the opportunity to develop their unique creative potentials. And yet they also have the humility to let others solo without having to be the center of attention. They are accountable for themselves and to one another, yet they are also forgiving, making the best of their own and others' mistakes. Most importantly, they have faith. As they play together, they trust in the availability of fresh possibilities. This strikes me as a pretty good model of being for any community to embrace, whether or not you're playing music or jazz together. There are many ways that we might choose to talk about the spirituality of jazz. I could write approximately 16 different sermons with that title. But the one that seems most present to me is that of jazz as a model for building community of living in unity while honoring diversity, and of nurturing real trust in one another. Jazz is an art form that combines rules with improvisation, structure with freedom, all grounded in a deep trust between musicians who are performing together. Like improv, it is a yes and art form. In a band, it is your job to make everyone else look good. Yes, there are moments when you get to solo, but the only reason you get that moment is because you trust that the others are going to go along with you, and they trust that you aren't going to do anything intentionally to throw them off. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> It's a lot of pressure talking about jazz with jazz musicians right here. <laughs> In this way, jazz lies at the intersection of freedom and responsibility in much the same way as Unitarian Universalism does. There is freedom, yes, but freedom in community looks vastly different than freedom in isolation. And it requires a level of trust that is in many ways countercultural. Modern society teaches us not to trust. 
We live in a capitalist system where competition is rewarded and cooperation is seen as a weakness. We also live in a system where no place is safe from violence, as we've seen again this weekend, even a church. Trust is seen as a form of naivete, not as a strength. And so we are taught from a young age not to trust. We aren't supposed to take that first offer from a used car salesman, or leave our doors unlocked, or talk to strangers. Jazz and Unitarian Universalism, I would argue, turn this upside down, demanding that we learn to trust one another through our covenants, through our music making, and hopefully teaching us to trust more deeply in other parts of our lives as well. This past April, I went on retreat with about 30 other ministers from northern New England. One of my favorite parts of the retreats that we take regularly together is that we sing together, sometimes late into the night. On this particular retreat, the singing lasted all day as well, as we had the treat of a workshop taught by Pat Humphreys and Sandy O oh of the band Emma's Revolution. It was billed as a songwriting workshop, and I went in thinking, yeah, right. There's no way am I am ever going to write a song. I can carry a tune about 70% of the time, but my one semester of music theory from college had left me thinking that songwriting was much better left to the experts. They started slow, teaching us about harmony, going around the circle and having each of us sing just our name or a word or phrase, then having everyone join in on harmony. By the second day, though, they had us writing. And then they did an, ex in, an exercise that made an introvert like me want to crawl back into my shell. <laughs> they invited each of us to sing what we had come up with by ourselves in front of everybody, enough to teach the rest of the group, and then pushed us to write more. It was the dreaded combination of having all the focus on me and talking about my feelings, and singing solo in front of people, approximately my three least favorite things. And yet, as I watched others have a go, I surprised myself by wanting more and more to take a turn. As I watched the way that Pat and Sandy midwifed songs out of people, their own words, encouraging them to just try things out right there in front of everyone, trusting that everyone had a song in them, and they just needed some help from the group to get it out. I looked down at the few lines I had written down and wondered what would happen if I raised my hand. And so that afternoon, I took a leap of faith and did just that. I muddled my words and I made mistakes and I struggled at times to come up with the next line. But through it all, that group of colleagues met me with encouragement, not derision, following my lead even when it was not the same as I had done it before and adding beautiful harmonies to enhance the simple words and melody I had come up with. By the end of the afternoon, I had written a full song and sung it in full harmony with two professional musicians and a room full of colleagues, something I never thought I would ever do. And it was this magical, heart-opening experience of music, community, and trust. It transformed my relationship with the people in that room, not just in that moment, but in the hours to come. The next day, I started sharing things I never thought I would with that group. My heart had opened, and I was ready to reach out that hand in trust. Now, I didn't write a jazz song. <laughs> 
But I do think my songwriting was a similar musical experience of improvisation and trust. Over those two days, we each took opportunities to lead and to follow, to offer our own gifts and to support others in offering theirs. It was much like what I saw happening on the stage on Friday night, and much like what I hope we can create more of here in this community and in our world. How can we learn to step back and let others lead as we support their gifts? How can we learn to step up and lead ourselves when we are needed and trust that others will be there to offer us support? How can we build a community of freedom and responsibility, a community grounded in trust? Perhaps we can learn a little something from jazz. <laughs>